St. Paul, we don't say Easter Sunday no more. We found out what it really means. It's, it's resurrection day. And because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Amen? Those of you all who have your Bibles, will you turn with me to the, the book of Mark's Gospel, the 16th chapter. Amen. Stand if y'all can. Say, Father, we stand. Y'all know why we stand? Because we want to give God all the glory. We want to stand Amen. on the word of God. Amen? Amen. So we stand. 16, I'm just going to read a few verses. I'm in the New International Version. You might be in the King James, but it all says about the same thing. Amen. When you have to say me. Amen. And it reads, when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought, bought spices that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb. Verse 3 says, and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But, y'all see that conjunction there? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. And as they entered, Lord have mercy, y'all say, as they entered, the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. That young man said, don't be alarmed, he said, you are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen and he is not here. See, the place where they laid him, but go tell his disciples, and especially go tell Peter. He is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Finally, verse 8 says, they were trembling and bewildered. The women went out and fled from the tomb. They saw nothing to anyone. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. You may take your seats. Amen. For a topic this wonderful morning, I want to present it to you this way. Early one morning. Early one morning. Let's go to God and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you now for giving us this opportunity to proclamate your gospel. Lord, you, you've been so good to us. We can't even say thank you enough. But Lord, I'm asking you right now, when you move Miller out of the way, yeah, yeah. that your word will go forth as a double-edged sword, cut the sin on the left yeah. and the right. right. And maybe, Lord, uh, maybe some kind of way, Pastor Boyd, maybe some kind of way, somebody may cry, I yield, I yield. Yes. What must I do to yes. be saved? Yes. Lord, we come this day. Thank you for your resurrection. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for resurrecting in my life. Thank you for resurrecting in others' lives. Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Early, one moment. St. Paul, the word early simply means the beginning. The beginning. And if you all remember just this morning, you got up early this morning. And it's amazing have y'all just thought about it this morning? How quiet it was when you woke up this morning. We were driving up 291 and Old, old Mountain Road. You couldn't hear nothing. Just quiet. Amen, somebody. Amen. And this morning, we celebrate something powerful. The resurrection. Amen. But early one morning, uh -huh. I want to talk for a few moments about Jesus being resurrected. And that's why we are here today to celebrate what he did for all of us. Amen, somebody. Amen. Church, I want to know how you felt this morning when you sacrificed your time to get up early. Somebody complained. I know they did. I know somebody complained. Lord, it's so early. Pastor Boyce, I know they said, Lord, I, I want to go. I know I've been going. Mama been telling me to go all these years. And I just got to go. But Lord, I'm just showing up early. Now tomorrow morning, somebody going to get up early and won't even complain, won't think about it. They just do what they do. Amen, lights. Amen. But I'm just reminding that these ladies had a purpose. 
problems in their lives that they wanted to do something. And they wanted to do something big. And every time you come on sunrise service, you don't know it, but you're blessing God because he did something big in your life and my life. Amen? Amen. Now, do you remember? I'm just, just, I got to tell it. You know, I'm from here. Y'all remember the little mountain cafe, don't you? Right. Oh, y'all done forgot about it because y'all done fixed it up and turned it around. But y'all remember the little mountain cafe, don't you? <laughs> Amen. Y'all remember on the other side of Greenland. Y'all remember down the corner around the corner, around the bend of Mount Zion. Like, y'all remember all that, don't you? <laughs> well, we didn't even think about the church on Sunday morning. Right. Amen, somebody. But God has been good to us, hasn't he, y'all? He's turned us around. He set our feet on the solid ground, and now we're not the same. Right, right. Amen, somebody. Amen. Well, it's the same thing as I see in the text. Friday, we call it Good Friday. Now, you can say it was a good Friday because Christ died. But this morning, we remember we come to celebrate he got up. All Amen? Right. Right. They pierced him. They in his hand, they pierced him in his side, pierced him in his feet, blood came streaming down. And this is the part I like. Pastor Boris, I like this part. He said, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. Yeah. Joseph said, let me have the body, let me carry it to a tomb. And, and normally in that day, I found out, Brother Boris, that Jews normally would be just thrown over, when they crucified, they were just thrown over the grave. But our Jesus and your Lord, they put him in a room, they cut out a hole in a, in a stone and they, they, they pulled it back and they sent him in there and they put a big stone on because of the end of the seven. Uh -huh. and, and I want to let y'all know something when you got motivation to love Jesus, Ooh. you'll do whatever it takes. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime that God says do, you'll do, you won't complain because I don't believe Mary Magdalene, I married the mother John James, I don't believe they complain. I'm trying to look, when y'all get home, look at your tent. Let's see if they complain about getting up early that morning. Y'all know Mary had some issues in her life. Amen, somebody. You know, some of us have some issues in our life, and because God has allowed us to overcome them, we ought to be better for them. Amen, somebody. Can I get a witness in here, y'all? I'm waving my hand first. Amen, somebody. And so here we find in the text, when the Sabbath was over, Lord have mercy, Mary Magdalene and Mary, Mother James and Salome brought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb. Amen, somebody. And they asked each other. Now, y'all got to see this. Can you imagine you walking? And, and you've been in Sunday school and vacation Bible school here at Mighty Man all these years. And, and you, you can imagine all the song, I dream, I was walking, walking through the sands of time. Then somebody was saying, didn't it rain, children? Didn't it rain? Oh, my Lord, didn't it? I know it did. You got to repeat some stuff that you came up with. You didn't know that much about it. You got to start repeating stuff. One of these old days, I'll fly away and be at rest. I wonder what they were saying, but all they could think about was, we got to get there to anoint his body. Amen, somebody. Amen. So the first thing I want to talk about is some unfinished business at the grave. Right. Y'all know there's some unfinished business at the grave. Amen, somebody. Y'all know you got some unfinished business. I don't care how saved you are, you got some unfinished business. Amen, somebody. I know I ain't going to get too many shots, but that's all right, too. Second thing is, but when they look up, you know, God will do some stuff for you. Yeah, if you just hold on. That's right. See, somebody here right now, you, you trying to get them claws out of your eyes and trying to come, come alive. Man, he's talking too loud. He's about to try to wake me up this morning. I'm coming to wake you up this morning. But when they looked up, they saw the stone. Do you know every time there's an obstacle in your life, God already got a way to fix it for you? Amen, somebody. Somebody had an obstacle this morning. It was dark outside. I'm not used to going to the church with a dog. Amen, somebody. But, but when they looked up, they saw that the stone was very large and had been rolled away. The second thing I want to talk about is when Jesus says what he says. 
He means what he said. Amen, somebody. In other words, Jesus is a man that he won't lie. Amen, somebody. Y'all know that. He told you, if you come to me and repent, do you know I'll save you? Yes, yes. Amen, somebody. Yes. Some people don't believe that, but, but they might die. If you just say, Lord, surrender, I, I surrender all. Do you know he'll come to your rescue? Amen. When you call on the Lord, he'll come. Y'all don't remember that, do you? And they found him. After they saw the angel, and the angel spoke to him, there was something happened. They got scared. They got scared. They got so scared that they ran back. And he said, while you're running back, while you're scared, go tell Peter. The other side, make sure you tell Peter. Now, I don't know in here who might be Peter in here. Amen, somebody. But God wanted to get a point across to one who has a wavering and some doubting in their minds and their hearts and their spirit. Pastor boys, I don't know about everybody in here, but at St. Paul, everybody loved the Lord, and nobody has doubting at St. Paul. Amen, somebody. But he said, go back and show them that, and make sure you tell Peter uh -huh. that I'm alive. Yeah, yeah. Amen, somebody. Uh -huh. Can I say I'm again, y'all? Uh -huh. First thing is, God will take away the barriers. Ooh, He'll have you overcome it. Uh -huh. Secondly, whatever he says, yeah, you yeah. can put your life on it. Yeah, right. if, you put, if you say it, if you say it, go ahead and put your life on it. Right. And finally, he will make your scariness turn into some power. My, 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 my. Amen, somebody. I just want y'all to know that Mark wrote this gospel. It's one of the synoptic gospels. But here's the oh, powerful thing about it. At one time, Mark was born with was was his cousin. And they were on a mission, their first mission of the journey, and they fell out. Paul fell out with them. But guess what, y'all? God won't let you fall out alone. <laughs> He'll let you come back together. If you hold on, trust in the Lord with all your heart, He'll let you come back. Right. So on that second mission of the journey, they came back. But I want y'all to know here, in this text, I like this because it's good for us. As we tarry on this day, and this, you look, 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 look at it. The sun getting ready to come up. They were on their way to anoint the body. Whose body? Jesus' body. And what I love about it is, when they were on their way, they didn't know how it was going to be. Do you know that's faith? You got to have faith if you're going to walk this journey. You, you walk this journey down, you ain't going to make it. But you got to trust God that he's going to make a way. I don't know, but do I have any witness in here? I wonder if anybody in here believe that even though I got up this morning, I don't know how I'm going to do I know he's kind of excited and all, but I want some work. But I'm giving you some work. If you give God the opportunity. Give it. Yes, give it. He'll bless you. Yes, he will. Now, I ain't talking about what I, when I left you, I was talking about what I thought. Now, I'm talking about what I've been. So, I can tell you right now, if you trust in the Lord, mm -hmm. the barriers that may be before you, mm -hmm. they might not even go nowhere but God will let you yeah. step on them. Hey. He'll let you walk through them. Yeah. I know, Pastor Boyd, know what I'm talking about. Because if you're a pastor, you're going to go through some stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thankful. That Jesus is showing us that sometimes the one that we call the sinners will be the one there for you. But everybody else who's been riding you won't be there for you. Those same disciples, those gentlemen that were with Jesus for three and a half years, they were there when the hard times came. They took the men, but the women, Jesus. The Jesus, the women. That's why, let me see. I believe it's more women in here now than me. But don't y'all get to it? I've been preached this text before, but I want y'all to hear something. Ladies, hear this. Even though there's more of you all in here, God still said, I want the man to be covered. Right. Amen, somebody. Amen. Still want him to be man. In other words, men, get in line and step up. Man up! I'm just telling the truth. That's the truth. Watch this, y'all. I like this right here. They bought spices, Brother Peterson. They hadn't finished the job because, see, when Joseph and Amethyst took the body, amen, somebody, and they carried it to his old precious tomb, Jesus knew they didn't know, but Jesus knew he wasn't going to be there long. 
it was bomb. Uh-huh. But what I like about the pastor boys is that they just threw some stuff on them and kept on going. <laughs> but the lady said, oh, no. See, I, I, I hate to say this, but I got to tell you. I might not never get back here again, but I got to tell you. Mighty uh-huh. man, St. Paul, stop doing a half job and praise God. Uh-huh. If you're going to praise him, if you're going to worship him, if you're going to accept him, do it all the way. You're a leader, you won't go all the way. Amen, somebody. You on the choir, and you'll come when you want to. Mm. Lord have mercy. I'm watching this, this sinner, this, this woman who was up the night. Yeah, her and Mother Jane and Sloan bought the spice because they said, ain't no way in the world. I'll let my Jesus and my Lord, the one who saved me. Anybody here been in the hospital lately? Anybody ever been in the hospital? Yeah, yeah. Anybody ever had any trucks? Yeah. Anybody going through something right now? Uh-huh. Now, how are you going to just give God a hand praise when he has done so much for you? I don't know how y'all feel. I had open heart saying, I won't give him a hand no more. I've given him a hand before, but I won't give it to him no more. He's been too good to me. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I'm talking about what he's done for me. And when I looked at the text, Pastor Boyd, I see very early. In the moment, mm-hmm. when the rooster started crowing, all right, right, all right. or before they started crowing, mm-hmm. it's dark outside. Mm-hmm. That's one problem right there. Right. <laughs> y'all know we ain't gonna stretch it. Y'all know y'all ain't gonna fool with the dark. But, but if you love the Lord like you say you do, you'll trust God that if He, if something happened to me, it just happened. For God, I live. Oh, pray God. And for God, I die. Yeah. Uh-oh, I'm touching some toes in here. That's what I come to do. This is what it says here, y'all. For God, I live and for God, I die. Because very early, on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb. And the word says, y'all look, for, and the word says, I didn't talk about me now, Pastor. I said, and the word says, and they asked each other. Now, that's where the problems come in at. You gonna ask me, and I'm asking you, Lord, how are we gonna get through with this problem? The church is keep doing this, we ain't got no money to pay. Now I, I, I'm a witness, Pastor Boyce. I don't know about you. Lord, how Lord, how are we gonna do this? Lord, I already fixed it up. That's right. That's right. What I'm trying to think about. God's already worked it out. I'm trying to tell y'all, stop worrying about stuff you ain't got no control of. Just do what you're supposed to do. And God will do the rest. Stop working on this day here, on this resurrection day. If he got you up yeah, yeah. from wherever you was in your life, uh-huh. don't you think he'll work that problem out? Yeah. He'll fix it, one. Mm-hmm. If Jesus can't fix it, nobody can. can they? Amen, somebody. Amen. But look what happens here, y'all. I want y'all to see the text. I'm a, I'm a Bible preacher. I don't go too far from the text. Look what it says here. But, but, mm. but. who? Roll the stone away mm. from the end. Who gonna do it? Mm. It's too large. Mm. Do you know your problems are too large for you to have them? Yeah. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Say it, say now, now you might have a a hang nail, mm. and you might use some clippers to cut it, mm. Pastor Boys, <laughs> but it's still hurting. Mm. But the pain, God, the only one can take care of the pain. You might take a leaf, mm. but the leaf still might not take care of the pain. But I. Of God, who, who made a leak, God, who is a leak, who can do all things but faith. I don't know about y'all, but I'm a type guy now. I know y'all say, what in the world that boy's been having that boy with that St. Paul? Let me tell y'all something. God been good. He's been real good. She says, Full back there, she looking at me and she said, Lord, I don't believe this. But that's what God can do if you give him the time. Amen, somebody. Look what happens here. Who's going to move? Do you know some stones are in our hearts right now? Ooh. Y'all are going to shout in here today. No, you going to shout now. It's the stone that you need to ask God to move for you. And stop looking for somebody else to move your stone. Stop looking for Deacon Brown. Well, Deacon Brown do that. I guess I, you better stop doing that. He got to get to heaven too. Just like you. Amen. Pastor Boyce can't pray about it. Let me tell you something. That's why I'm so glad that this text right here says that Jesus died yes. now. Yes. Because he died, you can go to God and pray for yourself. Right. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. Well, y'all hear me here. It says here 
Now watch the next statement. Brother Beasley, watch it real closely. Whatever Jesus says, mm -hmm. you can put your life on. Yeah. Here at the point, they asked him who gonna move the stone. Mm -hmm. When they looked up, what happened, y'all? The stone is already gone. I wonder if anybody in here got any problems that you've been worried about for 10 years. And you don't know how it's gonna be work out. Do you know God working on it right now? He's working on it right now as you speak. He's working on it. Stop worrying about stuff you ain't got no business. Cast your cares on him. He cares for you. That's scripture, y'all. If you give God the time and trust it, he'll make a way out of nowhere. Amen, somebody. I want to go there, y'all. I want to go there. And some people say, but well, Pastor, you're gonna be wild. You're gonna be so wild. If I be wild for the Lord, that's good Woo! enough for me. Yeah. I'm faithful to be wild for the Lord. When I play ball, you didn't think about no being born out and go back and do it two or three times. So why can't I do it now? When I look here, Brother Peterson, I want you to see this. The stone was already removed. Mm -hmm. Then there was an invitation. See, some folks are on the outside, even though you're on the inside here, my man, but you're really on the outside. Because you never have came in. You never have came in. Why haven't you come in? Because you're still looking at the outside. You're still thinking the question, well, how can I do this? When can I do this? I wish her boy do that. I wish she do that. Let me tell you, stop worrying about stuff that God already fix it up for you. We ain't got money. We can't do this. Now, I've been here, I was here about 50 years. But wasn't even thinking about the windows, mm -hmm. the flow, mm -hmm. the padded pews, mm -hmm. and everything else going with the church. But it kept going on. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. Why are we thinking about stuff and worry about stuff that God already going to fix up? Amen. It might not, you might not get to see it. Mm -hmm. But God going to fix it up. Because this church ain't going nowhere. Now, you might go to Rest Haven before he go. Yeah. I did something, Pastor Boy. I got to say this. God moved in my spirit a couple years ago. And I had to go out to Rest Haven at night. Y'all yes. Yes. watch me now. Yes. Yes. Sister Boy said, no, no, don't do that. No, no. I said, I'm going. Mm -hmm. I got to go. So she said, Mike, you go with him. He going crazy. <laughs> Mike rode out there with me and said, man, man. And when we got out there, he said, that ain't getting out. <laughs> I said, Mike, it'll be all right. It's going to be all right. I got to do what God told me to do. I went out there, y'all, parked the car, and walked way out there. Mike couldn't even see me. I began to talk to the Lord. I, I, I saw the text in its entirety. I had a rest haven a couple years ago. I wonder this morning that I have many of us went to the to, to rest haven before you came to Miami Man. Uh, you went and talked to your loved ones, one you loved when they were living. Have you ever been just went out to the graveyard late at night or early in the morning? Uh oh. Woo. Now we say we say that we love the Lord, but we scared of the graveyard. Get ready. Because your body going to the graveyard. Amen, somebody. Amen. But isn't it good that your body might go to the graveyard, but my soul? My soul. My soul. Lord have mercy. It's going to see him one day. And let me tell you something. He's not looking for no perfect people. He's just looking for some faithful people. Just faithful. You know, Pastor Boy, they throw this out as now. I ain't perfect. No, you're not perfect. Nobody perfect on this earth. But you ought to be faithful. You ought to be known and faithful. When Pastor Boy stand up here to do your eulogy, he ought to say one thing, they were faithful. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. Oh, well, as I carry on, they looked up. The stone was removed. And Brother Peter says, the angel was on the right hand and the left hand. He said, come on in. Come on out to rest haven and come on back there where your grandma is. I'm scared. I don't know what's going to happen. Are you seeking Jesus? How many of you are seeking Jesus? How can you not want to come to sunrise? That's too many services. I'm going to be tired. You're going to be tired anyway when you come from work on Monday. Amen, somebody. Early one morning. 
Come on, God. Yeah. She was just being. Where? What no? God moved in my spirit. Uh, yeah. Turn me around. Uh, woke me up. Uh, said, no, I got work for you. I said, no, I'm too old. He said, boy, you ain't too old. If I can pull a 99 year old, what's wrong with you? Then when I looked at him, the stone was removed. It said it was an earthquake. But I said with Jesus. I love Jesus. Yeah. Because when you're going through some stuff in your own life uh, and you can't figure it out, uh, God's already worked it out. Uh, I'm so glad. Uh, when I look back at that boy right there, y'all remember when he was a little bit of something. I didn't know what we were going to do. We were going to the camera somewhere and get him some help. But look at him now. Sometimes I can't even get him to talk about it because he's so quiet. But he was so active. If you call on the Lord, he'll come. Oh, he'll come. Brother Walsh, I know you don't know that. You, you, when I was here, they had this old song. And Mr. Anderson only sang that song. When you call on the Lord, he'll come. Oh, he'll come. And after a while, everybody's up and moving. Y'all remember that time? Y'all, oh, y'all forgot about that. I used to get up. I, I used to be sitting there and just looking. Dick and Jack and Dick and tell one day, God was going to wipe the tears from my eyes. God was going to turn me around. God was going to have me proclamate the gospel. I had no idea. Oh my God. One day, God was going to turn that thing around. And you know what I love here, God, when I look at the text? The young man dressed in white. He rolled and sitting on the right side. They were so afraid. Now, I just told you, if God said, Whatever he said, put your life on it. Put your life on it. Because he already has worked it out while you're trying to figure it out. Okay. Is that good news here today? God has already worked your situation out. Now listen, sometimes, Brother Morris, we be so torn up. I'm just so sick. I don't know how in the world I'm going to make it. God already know. He put that sickness on you so you can get closer to him. Because he knows as long as you sick and you got some medicine, the doctor give you right there, you just gonna do the same old thing. But just let some times come. Well, hard times coming. You can't figure it out. And don't let you be sick for about two months. Oh my God. You ever start complaining? Lord, I love you, but Lord, wait a minute, what's going on here? Lord, you always been on my side. Well, I looked at the text, y'all, and it said that they got a friend and a mom, and you said, you are looking for Jesus. You know some people in my name still looking for Jesus. And if you accepted him, he's already on the inside of you. You know that time you used to pull off your earrings and your shoes when somebody said something to you that, oh, oh we're so holy now, we didn't forgot now. Y'all know we hadn't always been saved, even though we've been in the church. Amen, somebody. But I looked at the text, and the text says that when the angel said, Come on in. Come and see for yourself. I wonder how many this morning, if you get, see some of us kind of get ashamed because you've been in the church all your life, but you really had never gave God your real heart. That stone has been there. Won't you be willing to move that stone today? And look what it says. And y'all, I'm not finished. I know, Pastor Paul, they said, hurry up get him out of here. I know that's all hope of it. Hurry up and get him out of here. I'm tired of hearing that kind of stuff. Look what it says here. Don't be alone, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. On Friday, they crucified. But oh Lord, look at what happened here. He has risen. In other words, he was resuscitated. <laughs> he got up with all. But anybody know that he got up in your life? Do you know that that was the time? I know the people here at the Mighty Manor. They probably said, Lord, have mercy. What's that happened over there? That was, he been, I've been resuscitated. I've been resurrected. I'm so thankful what God has done for me. Do you know? Deacon Moore, I used to, when I saw him coming, I was going the other way. I didn't even realize God was using him, that angel, to tell me to get right. Didn't even realize. Trying to run the other way. Somebody here trying to run the other way right now. I'm talking to somebody here right now because you're trying to run and all God's trying to do is help you Right. Yeah. Oh, y'all didn't think, oh, it's just gonna be a regular old sunrise service gonna go. No, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you why I got a chance. Because since you bought Pastor Boss, I might not never get this opportunity again. He is not here. You know that God 
specialize in things that seem impossible. Do y'all know that God can make a way out of no way? And as I get ready to move now, as they went in, this is not in this text, they saw something. He wasn't there. I don't know about y'all, but I'm so glad. Pastor Boss, you would never believe it to see you younger than me, but you would never believe this. I know mighty man looked at me and said, Lord, have mercy, what has happened? I remember a time I would have never, mm, never stood to do what I'm doing now, but because he moves and he lives on in the inside of us, he can do all things but fail. I'm so glad that God turned me around before it was everlasting too late. Aren't you glad he, res he resurrected you? Aren't you glad that God don't need no, no ways he can do what he do? Aren't you glad that God came in your life? Sometimes they make you scared of what he'll do. They had to run back and tell somebody of what he did. But I want to show y'all what God can do. I'm so glad that God looked down and saw the middle of shape we was in. He saw we were terrible. And so he had to go and show. Miller, you think it's going to be basketball. I'm going to show you it's not going to be basketball. It's going to be something greater than that. And I want y'all to know, St. Paul, you are the recipient of what God said he was going to do way before I even knew who I was. Because God looks past our thoughts. Amen, somebody. And he looked at our needs. I'm so thankful. Mighty man in St. Paul, I'm so thankful. When I think back over my life and I begin to think things over, God has been good to me. God has been good. Oh, he's been good. I can't tell him enough how good he's been to me. Pastor Boyd, when I walk this floor, I begin to think about Dave Helen. When I walk this floor, I begin to think about Eddie Bessar. When I walk this floor, I begin to think about Miss Pearl. When I walk this floor, I think about Miss, Miss, Miss Middle East Mac. When I walk this floor, I think about Mallory Boyd. When I walk this floor, I think about Deacon John Moore. Oh, when I think about what he has done for me and all that he has done, my soul cries out. To the precious name. But then, but then, I want y'all to hear this. We complain so much. We complain. If you don't do it right, you ought not never complain about what's going on in your life. You ought to give God all praise because He's worthy to be praised. Isn't He worthy, y'all? Isn't He worthy? No more. Cause God is gonna do it. So what? Put it on up a little bit more. I want them to hear while we hear the voice. Somebody here complains and complains and complains. But God is trying to show us. Some of us have had some good days. Some of us have had some bad days. But when you look at the whole picture, aren't you glad that He got you up? Aren't you glad? Let me show you after the song is playing what God did. Hope. See, I came over here. Yeah. Oh, so you sleep last night. I don't know what I'm telling you. I'm telling you. But when I look around.
But then, let me tell y'all something. When I look at the map, when it's over, it means he's coming back again. He don't leave something that he don't come back for. If you and I are saved, he's coming back for you. All you got to do is start raising your hand and praising God. Because he's coming back for you. If you don't complain. Why would you be complaining? Why should we complain? God's been good to us, y'all. He's been really good. When I think about my wife, y'all remember? I'm sure I've got to do this but I got to I got to Some y'all find it. Y'all don't know this. Y'all, I know y'all don't know what it means. But this is what it took so. Y'all called y'all in. Was sick. And she was right here in the church. And all these pills that you see. She had to take these pills. How can I complain about anything? But look what year it is. That was 1999. It's 2015. Look what God has done. I just shot myself. God has been good to us. Somebody here. When you think about what he's done, you ought to be saying thank you, Lord. You ought to be saying thank you, Lord. You ought to be saying thank you, Lord. He's been good, hasn't he? And if some of y'all remember, we didn't know what you were gonna make. But God has fixed it 15 years after the trouble of the stone was there. God removed the stone. And somebody here, y'all come play church, I don't play church no It's real business. I love the Lord, it ain't got nothing to do with membership, it's by God. God has been good, y'all. And it ain't nothing for me to get up by and three, three times a day. It don't make no difference for me. God's been good. I wouldn't complain if I was you. I would give God all the praise. Y'all understand that. I'm going to get back to Pastor Boss. I've done all I can do. I'm just letting you know. God's been good. I won't complain you. Amen. Amen. The church say amen. amen. The doors of the church are open. Amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Doors of church open. You can say this is your story, say this is my story. This is my song. Somebody here to pray with you. Raising my savior all the day long. If you need salvation, won't you come? This is my story. This is my song. Praising my savior. Praising my Perfect submission. Perfect submission. All is at rest. I am my Savior. I am my Savior. And happy and blessed. Watching and waiting. Looking above. Feel this goodness. Lost in his love. Wave your hand and say, this is my story, say, this is my story, this is my song. Praise him, my Savior. Praise my Savior. So I have a praise for God of how far he has brought you. Say, this is my story. This is my song. Praise him, my Savior. Praise him, my Savior. All the day. Clap your hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Give Pastor Bill another hand. Amen. Yes. Early one more. God has brought us a mighty long way. 
We want you to remain standing. He's going to come and give us our grace and our benediction. Give him a hand as he comes. Praise God. Let's give it God's praise again. Please, y'all. Let's give it a pastor. I hear you. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Early? Early. One morning. Yes, Lord. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you now. Thank you, Lord. For allowing us to remember thank you. how you resuscitated us and resurrected us. Yes, Lord. Lord, we thank you for thank you, Lord. getting up thank you. with all power. Yes, thank you. Now, Lord.